Hello and welcome to chapter 24 of the video tutorial how to set up an online shop with Runeweaver and PHP. <coughs> right, let's continue. We stopped at the trolley, we found out how to display the product's name, and I gave you some homework, so to say, <coughs> in displaying the product's price as well. Um, what we will do now is going to Dreamweaver. Remember that in functions PHP I had created a function obtain product name, so now I'm creating a new function that will be um, you probably have done this by now obtain product price I will select the price um, let's see if it's around DBL price right um, DBL price of table product where ID product is and we have used the previous query this one hardly needs to be modified you see we're adding a lot of code but modifying just a small part DBL price we paste it here save and from the page trolley list, we will call that function just as we did to find out the product name. Echo, and we put here, um, find the, the call to the function. We save, and you see, here we have the product's price. It was very easy, as I told you. So let's continue. By now, we will leave the, for later, or if we have the time for now, the, the deleting thing. But I'm interested in one thing. Here we can see a lot of items, a lot of prices, but I'm interested in the final price, the, the totals. To do if we need to do it, we need to do some programming, though very easy for us to get the total, sort to say. So we go to our page trolley list. Here we can see that this line is repeated once, and this one as many as necessary, one per item we've got. And I will create a new a new line. Let's see if it allows me here. I hit tabulator and you see it, it generates me a new line below. In this line I will write here total. I will align it to the right horizontal. Let's try to find it. Um, right here it is. And now I will put the total price here, okay? I suggest that you show in the currency sign after the amount, it's very easy. Just type in euros here. So it already appears after the price. And you see, we're having a total per line. Why? Because we're including it within the loop. That loop is the do while here, this while and this do here. You see? So then we have to extract all this line where we host the total. I pick it and drag it out. Out with it. Now I save and now it looks as it should. I think this is quite easy to understand. And here, what we've got to do is adding up these values. To add them up, let's initialize a new variable here that we will call um, total price equals zero. Um, that's when we haven't added up any product. I take this, select it, and in PHP, I tell it, you label it. I could do it myself easily, but if Dreamweaver provides it, so much better. And here, what we need is that this total price increases as products keep on adding up to the list and, in the end, display it in the screen. As you can see, it's very easy. As this will not affect the HTML, I will add right here. Let's see. Um, total price equals total price, which will be zero in the first round, plus this thing here. Obtain all this, right? Um, this is PHP as well, so we will fix all these a little. We will do one thing. Um, I'm going to take this out of here and we'll mark it all as PHP so that I will have... I will enlarge this so that we can see it better. Here, total price equals total price plus the price of the product we're watching in this moment. Um, this will have no effect in the web yet. I update, and you see, no changes, apparently at least. But down here, in the end, um, in this value here, in this cell belonging to this TD, I will display that value, that price I've got. So, uh, I write here, total price, semicolons, and taking advantage of Dreamweaver's tools, I add an echo right here. So, theoretically, this would work. Let's have a look, and you see, 
it's making the addition 897 plus 20, 917 plane. I will add euros now. Euros. You see how is it? Later, it's a matter of including colors and all that to differentiate the different parts. There's another very important thing, and probably many of you will ask me in the future, so we will see it now. It's the taxes stuff, the VAT. Because all the products have got their VAT or the international payment tax or whatever, depending on each country. <clears throat> in the database, we're going to make a new table where we will host the series of values, okay? I create a new table and I write ID counter, which is of an integer type. We've done this a thousand times. It's an auto increment and a primary key. And I put here int VAT, for example. It's an integer type, even though this uh, is 18%, a VAT will always be an integer type, not a 18.7% or 18.75%. So let's consider it an integer type. Uh, by now we will leave this table like this with only two values. I will save it as TBL variables, for example. Right. Okay, saved. Uh, now I go to table variables and I will enter the VAT which is nowadays 18% or the corresponding value. You see the counter automatically fills it with number 1 and 18 in the VAT cell. I've got the value there. Why have I created a table instead of including it in the code? Because if this VAT changed tomorrow I will just go to the table and change that 18 for their new value, okay? We can do that for all from the administration. If we have the time we will try it as well. Okay, so we have in a value of the database, as you've seen, the VAT rate, 18%. Uh, let's imagine we're displaying products without VAT, okay? Uh, when I'm here, I'm watching the products with non-included VAT. We can warn about it somewhere in the page, but well, we can include VAT as you please. I will buy these shoes. You see it has increased the price, one unit, etc. Total, 951 euros. Let's put this apart so that I get a subtotal, the VAT, and the VAT included total. Okay, very easy. We come here, as we did before, I click here, hit tabulation, and it generates a new line. I will need one more, so I tabulate, tabulate, and here we have the other line, you see? Fine, here we have total, I'm gonna write here subtotal. Um, I'm going to write here, let's see if it allows me, I click here and write VAT and down here total VAT included, for example. The dot, so that everything is arranged the same. So far, what I will do is extracting the value of that VAT. I will extract it from the database. What will I do? I will use my functions folder, I mean my functions file where I have all the functions I need. But as I haven't got the function, I will generate it. I copy one I've already done, as you can see, it's always a similar process. And I will change the name to obtain VAT. I don't need to pass any value because the VAT is a value already in my table. I don't know exactly what it is. So I choose select and I would put the VAT here. What VAT is it? Um, we will see it in the own table. It's in VAT and I tell it, select me the in VAT of what table? It's called TBL variables. Fine, TBL variables where, where what? Where ID counter, here would be ID counter, equals 1. Because this table will be slightly special and will only have one line, okay? It will have a line, let's check the data, one line. When we introduce more variables, we can use this table and create new fields for them. So, I won't need this thing behind the identificator and I won't need the, the sprintf either because I'm not adding anything else, no variables. So, you see, I'm leaving this perfect. And here, what I'm putting back is, is the VAT value. I save and come here. Sorry, I'm going to copy this now, the function's name. And here in VAT, I will put that function obtain VAT. That will also be uh, using Dreamweaver that provides me all this code obtain VAT. Let's see what it has done. I save now and it tells me 
Right, it tells me that an undefined constant obtained that blah blah blah. Okay, there is some problem around that it doesn't find obtained that. Okay, let's see why it doesn't find it. Obtain that, we've got it here. Uh, we're considering it as. I forgot to write the brackets for it to know it's a function. As I didn't write them, it thought it was a constant, not a function. Um, the undefined constant obtained that, assumed the value, well, here it says what it was going to do to fix it, but it obtained nothing. Okay, I put the brackets, although I'm not passing a parameter, I save, and there it is, right? To make it even cuter, I can add the percentage symbol, right? Um, I save, and it gets much cuter, so to say. And now this total with that would be multiplying 900, 51 per 1.18, right? And that way you get the increase of 18% uh, VAT. How do we do this? How, how do we get the VAT price of a product? Just by multiplying the price by 1.18, okay? Or else adding up the, the previous value, the, the subtotal, multiplied by 0 0.18 and adding it to the original. Let's see how we can do it. By now, the total result will be here in euros, okay? I put it in euros here, and you see it appears here straightforward. And I'm going to put now the PHP because this is going to be proper. So I'm going to put, for example, the value with VAT, which is a variable I haven't defined yet, and that's not exist so far, will equal the total price I picked before multiplied by one point and and what will come here the VAT rate I will take this piece here one point okay this way it will be kind of messy because we're mixing function names with operations right um, so maybe it isn't the best way of doing it how do we think we could multiply that 18 value so that it works? Let's check. You see, it's already giving me a syntax error here. It's wrong. Let's do a previous thing. Let's make a variable that will be called multiplicator. That will equal 1. Uh, let's see. Will equal 100 plus the 18. That would be obtained that we can put that here a hundred plus this, right? By now, I have one thing here, it will have a value of 118, but I want to multiply it by 1.18. So, if I divide this into a hundred, we will obtain 1.18. And here, I would multiply that price, would be the total price multiplied by the multiplicator. Well, this would be a bizarre way of doing it. But now you can do it as you please or as you find easier. I always try to explain it the simplest way. I save and so far in show us to make the an echo. I will copy this thing here and I that echo. Uh -huh. I save and you see I get the final VAT price. So total 951, 18% VAT, total with VAT 1122.18 euros. More or less, in this code game, we have applied the VAT increase. And well, I'm not sure if it's worth including the... Many pages include the VAT value. I mean, apart from the price, they tell you how much money does the VAT mean. You can do that if you want to. Let's put it and that way we can play a little with it and you understand how it goes. We will add one more field here. I click here, right button, choose table insert line and here I type VAT amount. This value will also be in euros and here the we will we will type VAT amount. How much am I adding to the subtotal to give me this result? It when I'm buying something worth hundred euros it would be it would tell me the 18% VAT and how much is the VAT. In this case 18 euros right we can take advantage of what we've already got here and can do as follows. Total price will be multiplied by 0 0.18. So let's do one thing. I will copy all this, copy, right, 
and I will paste it here where the VAT value goes. But instead of 100, this time we will add 0. That is, we will only add the VAT value divided by 100. I will delete these users brackets. Value with VAT will become VAT value. And I copy this and paste it here. I save. And there it is. Everything is detailed. Subtotal 951. The applied VAT is 18%. The total VAT is 171.18. And the total amount is 1122.18. Right. Here I explain this a little more in detail because this is the way to sum, for example, uh, shipping rates uh, and so on, for you to see how, with a little code and basic maths, we can learn how to add this series of things, right? Uh, okay, so we're going to stop here because I understand this is a very thick chapter and we handled more code than we expected, but I think it was worth because many of you would need it. So, see you all in chapter 25. I hope you don't get discouraged. There's a little step to reach the final purpose, purchase, and I think with this you've got plenty of information to create virtually any page you might have in mind. So, see you in chapter 25. Regards.